Hello, my name is Alexander Barmin, and as you know, every week I publish five links which I find interesting. This time I decided to take a step forward and uh, not only share links, but also share my thoughts about these links. So, as ordinary, five links, five short comments. First link is about introduction of a new build system, which is called Build. And the idea here is that it is not only written in Java, the build system itself, but also build script also should be written in Java. You know, we have Maven and Gradle, and it sounds like it's overwhelming tools, but uh, in Maven you have to deal with XML a lot, in Gradle you have to be familiar with uh, Gradle, uh, with Groovy or Kotlin, but in case you're writing your build script and build, obviously you have to be familiar with uh, its semantics, uh, but apart from that, you're just writing your build script in pure Java. Well, on the one hand, from my perspective, it looks quite promising, because, you know, in case if you have a big project, it might be quite complicated to build um, overwhelming and uh, good build script. On the other hand, well, again, it's a new tool to learn, but still, let's give it a try. Second article is from uh, our Shining expert Martin Fowler and uh, this article is about Slack. Obviously it's not about software itself but it's about Slack and the planning. You know uh, we ordinarily plan our work in iterations for example two weeks length and what we're trying to do is to build as full packed iterations as possible. For example, if we have 20 story points, we should take 20 story points and not less. But, uh, you know, expert says that it's better not to fully load the team. It's better to have some time for some unexpected work, for example, or in case if everything is done, it's possible to work on some technical depth. So, please uh, read an article if you want to know opinion of Martin Fowler on planning and slacks. Third article is about event stores. You know, we are using event stores uh, quite often. For example, Kafka is a good event store. It's a great example. And actually, Event store is kind of database, but not an ordinary relational or non-relational database. It's key value database. And in this article, it is described why it makes sense to think about event stores as about databases. Idea is simple and straightforward. Our database are storing records, for example, in form of rows or in form of documents. In case if we're using event store, we're also storing data, but uh, in maybe not really fully structured format, but as key value pairs. And despite the fact that event store is quite often considered as a messaging tool, for example, for delivering event, for delivering data, for service to service communication, it's also a good way to store data for some time. So read an article if you want to know more. Another good article from the same after, it's about Postgres. So Postgres is one of the widely used databases. I suppose uh, maybe MySQL is more widely used or maybe SQLite, but still Postgres is quite popular and it is uh, good at high load, it's good at scaling. It has many different fantastic capabilities, for example, JSONB. But uh, other than that, uh, Postgres allows to be is extended using extensions. And extension can be written in many different languages, for example, in C, in Rust, uh, in, uh, I don't know, I suppose in almost everything. And there are many extensions. And here in the article, we have description and use cases and examples for a few of them. For example, Timescale DB allows to add time series capabilities to the Postgres. For example, if you're dealing and you need to ingest data from some IoT devices, you may use, I don't know, Kinesis Fire, uh, AWS Kinesis, or in case if you're not expecting to have a high load at least at the very beginning, you can start using Timescale DB for that. Another good extension. 
is uh, so here we have a quite great uh, example how to ingest data, how to build alerts. Another good extension is post GIS, which allows to deal with spatial data, for example, with geolocations. And so, well, here there is a quite good question. Why can't we just, let's say, store our uh, geographic data in a plain table? Well, yes, we can. But the main challenge here is that there is some math. For example, in case if we need to find uh, some uh, points or some data which is around a particular point in area. So in this case, a plain table may not be sufficient, but in case if you're using PostGIS extension, it will definitely help. Another good example and another good extension is uh, generated columns. Well, on the one hand, it sounds like uh, we're trying to get back to storage procedures. Well, yes and no because storage procedures is quite complicated thing which allows to do a lot with uh, our data but uh, generate columns is a bit simpler way to compute some data on insert or on update for example you're adding some data into the table and in case if you have this extension it will also generate values for additional fields obviously you can do it on the code but on the other hand if you're a, in case if you're for example uh, inserting a lot of data in one go, you can do it on database side. Logical replication. Actually, this is a fantastic extension which uh, allows you to push data from database to somewhere else. So Postgres is using write ahead log, so it means that any transaction which is coming to the database, first written in log, next it is applied to the database tables themselves but here in case of using logical replication obviously ordinary replication is also working using logical uh, replication in this right ahead log but still so by using this extension you can push changes uh, um, push out notifications to almost anywhere for example to web ui so I suppose there are many different and interesting extensions which allows to make your postgres personic on the other hand, uh, my personal opinion is that it may be not always a good idea to install so many extensions to the database. Still, primarily it's a data store. And if you have some business logic, it's better not to get back to storage procedures and do it in code. Because first of all, it's much easier to read, it's much easier to debug, it's much easier to version these changes. And uh, the last the one article in the list is about real-time messaging architecture at Slack. You know, uh, this is a different Slack, obviously, not the same Slack uh, as in the previous article from Martin Fowler. This, uh, this article is a use case, how exactly Slack built their infrastructure for delivering messages in real time. So thank you very much for watching me. I hope I saved you some time. Instead of reading, you can listen to me. Have a good day.